It is so good to be here. And I thank you. I thank you. I want to thank you from uh, everyone. And I know that some of you don't know me, but I want to publicly say thank you to people that prayed and whoever prayed for me. I want, to know, I want you to know that it was tangible, that when you pray for people, okay, you can feel it. You know that people that, that you, is praying for you. And I could feel God's presence, okay? So I just want you to know that, okay? And it is so good to be up here this morning and to worship our God and to give him the praise that he's due. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'll invite you to stand with me. Let's sing the song together. We won't fear the battle. We won't fear the night. We will walk the valley with you by our side. You will go before us. You will lead the way, you will count us on, only you can say. Sing with joy now, our God is for us. The Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress. Raise your voice now, no love is greater. Who can stand against us if our God is for us? can separate us hell and death could not defeat us he who gave his son to free us holds me in his love neither height nor death can separate us hell and death could not defeat us he who gave his son to free us holds me in his love strong and mighty fortress. Raise your voice now. No love is greater. Who can stand against us if our God is for us? Sing now. Sing with joy now. Our God is for us. The Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress. Raise your voice now. No love is greater. Who can stand against us if our God is for us? Yeah. And all the people said amen. Whoa, whoa, ho. And all the people said amen. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people said amen. Well, you are not alone. If you are lonely when you feel afraid, you're not the only. We're all the same in need of mercy. To be forgiven and free. It's all you got to lean on, but thank God it's all you need. And all the people said amen. Oh, whoa, ho. And all the people said amen. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people said amen. Well, if you're rich or poor, well, it don't matter. Weak or strong and know that love is what we're after. We're all broken, but we're all in this together. God knows we stumble and fall. He so loved the world, he sent his son to save us all. And all the people said amen. Whoa, whoa, ho. And all the people said amen. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people said amen. Let's 
Blessed are the poor in spirit who are torn apart. Blessed are the persecuted and the pure in heart. Blessed are the people hungry for another star. But theirs is the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And all the people said amen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And all the people said amen. People said amen. Whoa, whoa, ho, and all the people said amen. Last time. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people said amen. 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 Good worship, people. Awesome. Welcome back, Ray. Thank you. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> Right on. We worship the God. We worship, worship the God who was. We, we worship, worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. Yeah, there's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We're going to shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We're going to shout out your praise. We sing to the God who is. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross And he rose up from that grave My God still rolling the stones away There's joy in the house of the Lord There's joy in the house of the Lord today And we won't be quiet We're gonna shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place And we won't be quiet we're going to shout out to praise. Cause we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Cause we were the beggars, now we're royalty, we were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Sing it, church. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We're going to shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We're going to shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We're going to shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We're going to shout out your praise. Oh, we're going to shout out your praise. Lord, we're going to shout out your praise. We're going to shout out your praise. Yeah, praise the Lord. 
bless, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless him with everything we've got. And I thank, thank you for entering into worship. We're going to invite our boys and girls to head out to uh, OCC Kids right now and uh, go and have your spe special time uh, out in the the Theater 4. It's really, as has already been mentioned, it's really great to have... Uh, our new worship leader back. <laughs> That's great, great. You know, for those of you who don't, don't know the story, Ray, Ray had a heart attack uh, back in early, early this year, and so it's been a long road to recover, but he's, he's fully, fully back. And so it's great having him on the worship team. It's great having Ryan on drums as well. And, and this is... We're, we're, we're going back a few years because Lawson Murray is, gonna, is, is coming to speak uh, this, this morning as well. And Lawson was the founding pastor of OCC. And so it's a, a real joy and privilege to have him back and to be, be speaking. And he'll be sharing some of the, uh, some, some family matters that are, that are important. Um, I want to highlight a couple, couple of things uh, that, are, that are happening. A couple of weeks' time come, coming up uh, on the last Friday night. Of this month, we're with along with Life, we're hosting, co-hosting uh, the, uh, the the film G Jesus Revolution. So that's at 6:30 here at OCC. And if you're available that evening and you're willing to uh, help us with, uh, we need a couple of ticket tape. Ta ticket takers and uh, providing refreshment, uh, coffee and tea. And, and I, I think Scott Jackson's going to be here, which means there has to be some Coke on the, on the counter. Uh, those of you who know Scott well know, know that that's true. And then, so, yeah, so looking for some opportunities for that, that would be great. And then on the Sunday night, we're showing um, Puss 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 in Boots to our to our, our neighborhood and be re-beginning that ministry that connects with our, our our neighbors and that opportunity just just to bless people. And again, uh, there's an opportunity to serve as you uh, as we make pop popcorn and, and, and serve serve that together. Sunday nights. Uh, the next Sunday night prayer gathering is on the 23rd, so not, not tonight, but next next Sunday, and that's going to be over Zoom, and then the first Sunday of May, we'll be gathering in person in Theater One to, uh, to pray, pray together, and so we're going to be sort of alternating, so the first Sunday of the month will, 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 will tend to be a, an in-person prayer gathering, and then other, other weeks we'll, we'll, we may gather, some, some will be on Zoom, uh, hopefully as we go on, some will uh, then be moved to uh, in-person in, in gatherings. Um, remember as well, and I noticed quite a few were, were bringing in um, uh, toilet paper this morning. And, and so we, we, we really want to bless uh, Mar Mariposa Hospice and, and that ministry uh, to people at, at the end, end of life. And so if you can bring toilet paper in or toilet paper, to toilet bowl cleaner, I know they would really appreciate that. And uh, I, I trust that we'll bring enough that it'll take a, a van load of stuff over there to, to really bless, bless that ministry. We want to... Uh, as I mentioned, Lawson's uh, coming to, uh, to share in a, in a few mo moments. Uh, and par part of his role is with Scripture Gift Mission and with Scripture Union. So let's watch this short video that highlights some of that ministry of Scripture Union. Let's take some time to pray together. Father, we, we, we come to this morning and we've begun with, with worshiping you, with celebrating your love and your grace and your power. We're celebrating the fact that you are for us. And Lord, we rejoice in that. And as we come this morning, Lord, we, we come and we pray and we lift up those in our, our, our midst who need a, need a touch from you. 
Lord, we, we, we think of some in our congregation who are, are struggling with health issues. And Lord, so we lift up Wesley as you continue to, to work healing in his little body. Father, I pray for, for Dwayne as he goes for tests, for, for Ed as he's, he's dealing with a whole bunch of things. And Lord, we just pray that he would continue to be, be pain-free. Lord, thank you that Doreen is, is home from hospital. And Lord, just continue to uh, strengthen her heart, strengthen her body as she recovers from that quadruple by bypass. Father, we, we, we pray for Sean as, as he pre preaches this morning down at Inniswood Baptist in, in, in Barrie. Father, we, we pray for um, uh, those who are, who are going through some difficult times through, through because of grief. Lord, I think of Doreen and, and Cindy um, Gammon, who, who lost a mother and a grandmother and are, are celebrating her faithfulness and her, her walk with you, but also sense of the, a deep loss. Lord, I lift up Kara as well, who's, 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 who's grandma passed this week. And so, Lord, just minister to them. Surround them with your presence, with your love, with, with your grace. Father, but more, more than just health needs, and as important as those are, Lord, we, we, we come and invite your Holy Spirit to work in our lives and in our hearts. We invite you to change things, to convict us, to challenge us, to encourage us. Father, I pray that you'd give us, not just here at OCC, but in every church across this city, uh, across this province, or around, around the globe, give us your hope. Remind us of the foundation on which we stand, the kingdom that we've inherited that can never be shaken. Lord, there, there's so much shaking going on in this world, but we know that we stand firm because of who you are, because of the promise, because of the hope we have, because of the resurrection. Lord, teach us how to practice resurrection, how to live out what we celebrated last Sunday. And so, Father, just continue to do your holy work, your awesome work, your amazing work in our midst. And so as we do that, Lord, we come and we pray. We pray in the way that you taught us as your followers, as your disciples. And so I invite you to join with me as, as we pray in this kingdom prayer, as disciples' prayer. Our Father in heaven, may your holy name be honored. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need. Forgive us the wrongs we have done as we forgive the wrongs that others have done to us. Do not bring us to hard testing, but keep us safe from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to worship our God. Amen. Amen. You know, in the book of Revelation, it gives you a, a little picture of what it's going to be like when we get to heaven with the saints and the angels worshiping the Lord, right? And you know, the worship that we do and the prayers that we we give to God are like a, a sweet incense to him in his nostrils. He loves it when, our, when the saints pray and worship him. So I invite you to stand with me this morning. Let's sing to this to our holy God this morning.
sinful man thy glory may not see. Only thou art holy, there is none beside thee. Perfect in power, in love and pure.
it all. Lord, you are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. Oh, you deserve the glory. We give it glory, Lord. Glory. You are worthy of it all. Oh, you are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and you are all things. For you deserve the glory. We deserve it, Lord. We worship you this morning, Lord. We give you our hearts this morning, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. bless you. We praise your awesome name. You are worthy of all praise and all glory and honor. And Father, we just pray that that understanding would permeate deep, deep, deep into our souls, to those hidden places, those inner places, those places that sometimes we don't even want to acknowledge. Recognize that you are worthy. And so, Father, we worship you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And as I said earlier, it's a real joy and a privilege to uh, have Lawson uh, Murray uh, bring, bring the word and uh, direct us in, into truths. And so, Lord, we just pray that you'd bless Lawson, uh, anoint him, give him everything he needs as he speaks your truth to us here at OCC. Let's welcome Lawson. Good morning. So good to be with you. And I was worshiping in the front here and I was thinking, Lord, your faithfulness with OCC. And then just to get up and to see there's still people here. This is amazing. <laughs> Wonderful. I want to speak to you this morning about family matters. 
I think as I've watched what's happened in our country over the last few decades, the family has been under attack. And Satan has been doing everything he can possibly do to undermine the family. And this is very much on our hearts. And so we are wanting to advocate for the family to remind us as God's people about how important the family is. One of the surprising findings in the EFC study that was published just over a week ago called Parenting Faith, it was a two-year study, is that parents who rarely attend church are more confident about nurturing their children's faith than parents who regularly attend church. Yes, you heard correctly. You don't need to rush out and get another cup of coffee. (laughs) Isn't that interesting? Parents who attend church sporadically or more likely to believe that they're doing a good job fostering their children's faith formation than parents who are regular. Now, how is this possible? Well, psychology helps us understand the anomaly. There's a theory called the Dunning-Kruger effect that postulates, and I quote from the theory, Those who lack knowledge or skill in certain areas tend to overestimate their own competence. And conversely, those who do have skill and knowledge tend to underestimate their competence. Here's another fascinating finding. In the 2021 Multinational Children's Ministry Report, Many children's ministry pastors around the world say that most parents don't know how to nurture their children's faith. Speaking about Christian parents. Is this true? Have Christian parents abdicated their duty to nurture their children's faith? Have church leaders fostered a leave it to the expert mentality and usurped the parent's role? Or has a consumer culture blinded us to our God-ordained responsibilities? Well, let's turn to God's Word for some answers. I invite you to grab your phone or your Bible, printed Bible, wherever you've got the Scriptures. Or if you've taken the day off because it's a day of rest, just watch it on the screen. But if you've got your Bible opened in an electronic or printed form, you can highlight and track with me as I go through the text in the next 15 or 20 minutes. Jump to Deuteronomy chapter 6. We're going to read the first nine verses. Listen up. This is the word of the Lord. More important than my commentary that will follow. This is God's word. These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. So that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of our ancestors, promised you. Hear, O Israel, The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. 
Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Father God, thank you for your word. For it is life. And now as we dig into it, we ask you, Lord, to help us to hear. Speak, Lord, for we are a needy people, and we've come here this morning to hear from you, to meet with you. Lord, by your Spirit be present in our midst, even as you are, but now teaching us from your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Deuteronomy 6 starts a whole new beginning for a generation of people. As Moses begins to speak, I can just picture the people hanging on every word. These are the words, the foundational words, the core words that inform and form the nation of Israel and guide it for generations to come. And they're no less essential for us today. For these words are God's blueprint for passing the faith from one generation to the next. Fast forward to today. As you're sitting here, I just want you now to think with me about your own children or grandchildren, or in my mother-in-law's case, her great-grandchildren. Think about your, maybe just one, because some of you may have many. Which one is the Lord bringing to mind now? Picture where that child or grandchild or great-grandchild lives. Possibly what he or she is doing right now. What's his or her name? Just turn to the person next to you and tell them the name of the person that you're thinking about. Just share the name. I'm wondering if I was sitting next to Karen, if we would have had the same name or a different name. Different generations. My family line, I've been I, searching uh, back in my family, and Karen, uh, uh, two years ago, got me the DNA test, and I discovered uh, who I'm all related to up the uh, east coast of Scotland, uh, and it's fascinating. And I've discovered I go all the way back to a guy called Adam. <laughs> I haven't finished my joke. I was going to say, and his wife, Eve. <laughs> and you do too. So we're all related. We're relatives. Isn't that wonderful? And we're here for a bit of a family reunion. And that's wonderful. And we're going to hear what the Lord has to say to our family. So here's the first thing that he says in this word, as I've broken it down into four key points. The first one is this. Faith formation, family faith formation, involves everyone. For years when I came to Deuteronomy 6 and verses 3 and 4, I missed a little phrase there. And if you look at Deuteronomy 6, you'll see that little phrase is repeated twice. Here, O Israel, 
Hear, O Israel. Don't skip over those three words. This message is for a whole nation and people, not just a targeted segment. It's for the whole faith community. So reaching and equipping successive generations to love and live for Jesus involves all of us. No exceptions. It includes youth with younger siblings and young adults at university and senior citizens and the pastors and leaders in this church. It includes everyone. We all have a part to play. God never intended for children's faith formation to be the sole responsibility of their parents and grandparents. We're in it together. It's not someone else's job to connect children with Jesus and his story. God needs you and you. Are we online? And you watching online. And you and you and you. I want to ask another question. Are you connected with a child in your church? Bring the name of that child to mind. According to the evangelical Christian polling station, the largest in the world, the Barna Group, children are three times more likely to read the Bible independently obey the scriptures and rank church attendance as the high point of their week when they have meaningful relationships with one or more adults in their church. And so I ask again, what's the name of the child that you are connected to here in OCC? Oh, it was so good to say OCC. I'm in a different church every week, so it's a real blessing to be back with you. It's not programs that change people. It's people. Amen. Children need you. Everyone has a part to play. Everyone. Second thing that I see in the text is that faith formation starts with me and you. When I say me, you, we're pointing at ourselves. The object of the Deuteronomy passage is our hearts. In verses 5 and 6 we read, Love the Lord your God with all your and with all your, and with all your, these commandments, it says there, that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Now, I know the real Christians here, you've got your highlighter in your pocket. Whip out your highlighter. <laughs> you laughing? Are there no real Christians here? <laughs> Highlight that little phrase with all your heart and on your heart. And then all the smart people with smartphones, they just have to use their finger. You don't need a highlighter anymore. The biblical definition of the heart is the totality of our being. Most of the times when we read that word heart in the Bible, it's speaking about our thoughts, our desires, our affections, our imaginations, our reasoning powers, our intentions. It's everything that makes us human. It's more than just our emotions. To love the Lord our God with all our heart is to love Him with our emotions, our intellect, and our will. I like how Eugene Peterson, in his paraphrase, the message, as he dealt with this portion of Scripture, said this, and I quote, 
Write these commandments that I've given you today on your hearts. Get them inside of you. And then get them inside of your children. Oh, that is a powerful progression. If God's word isn't branded on my heart, there's no way I can impress it on the heart of a child. But when my faith is authentic, it endorses what I teach my children and grandchildren. Listen up, mums and dads. The best gift you can give your children is your love for Jesus. Do you have your phones with you today? Grab your phone. Turn it on. We're usually telling you to turn it off. Now I need you to turn it on. Oh, I've been so programmed by Pastor Mike. Now this other one comes along and blows it. I want you to send a message to yourself. Nana's busy looking to Karen. How do I do this? <laughs> no, no, she's doing okay. Let's send a message to yourself. And this is the message. The best gift I can give, and now then put the name in of your son or daughter or grandson or granddaughter. Type that name in, is my love for Jesus. If you don't know how to send a message to yourself, send it to your spouse or to someone really close to you. The best gift I can give, put the name in, is my love for Jesus. Why am I asking you to do that? I don't know about you, but when I receive a message, maybe it's because I learn, my primary learning style is visual. When I see that written, man, I, then it impacts me. So I want you to receive this sometime over the rest of today or tomorrow whenever you check out your phone again. And be reminded that the faith formation of our children starts with each one of us. Thirdly, oh, by the way, you can turn your phones off again. <laughs> Thirdly, faith formation is a journey. The outworking of the Deuteronomy passage is a process. In verse 7 it says, impress them, speaking about the scriptures, on your children. The New Living Translation says, and I like the way the New Living Translation does it, repeat them again and again to your children. Again and again. Faith formation isn't a one-off exercise, nor can it be compartmentalized. Faith formation is a 24-7 undertaking. It's ongoing. My youngest son, Jonathan, will soon be in his 30s. His older siblings will soon be in their 40s. Yeah. Ray still looks as young as when I first met him. Oh, thank you, Ray. I have to admit, I got gray hairs when I was the pastor of this church. <laughs> oh. My three children and their wonderful spouses have blessed us with 11 grandchildren. We're so thankful. And my wife and I, when it comes to children, are empty nesters. The fact that Nana's lived with us for 28 years is another uh, aspect of the home. Isn't that wonderful, Mum? You and I have lived together longer than I lived with my own children. But, you know, as Karen and I think about our children, we recognize that our God-given responsibility to foster their faith 
didn't end when they left the home. Karen and I are obligated for the rest of our lives to equip and encourage our children to follow Jesus. There's no retirement from passing on our faith to our children. You need to hear that. Because our culture has given a very different message on this. And there are all sorts of grandparents who are disconnected from their families and have bought into the lie that this is all about just doing your own thing, playing golf, etc. Not in God's word. We to do the passing on of our faith normally and naturally whenever and wherever we can with our families. I like the way Moses describes the process. He uses opposites, sitting and walking, lying down and getting up to indicate that any time is suitable for talking about the Lord. Fostering the faith formation of our children shouldn't be complicated. There are three simple things that we can do that are highlighted in verse 7 of Deuteronomy chapter 6. Number one, talk about Jesus and his word in the home. Even the busiest of families sit down to eat a meal together. And research indicates that when families eat together at least five times a week, they build strong and enduring bonds. Prioritizing table time nourishes our children's faith and spiritual growth. Karen and I were far from perfect parents. Well, Karen was more perfect than I was. Did someone say amen? <laughs> But the one thing we did was we insisted that our children sat down and had supper together with us every day. And as much as that was possible. The kitchen table, certainly in our home, is where we connected with God's word interactively and experientially. And as my children will tell you, it's where we grapple to understand and develop a biblical worldview that we could stand by and live by. So that's the first thing we, we can all do. Talk about Jesus and his word in the home. Secondly, talk about Jesus and his word in the car. Now, the scripture says here, while you're walking along the road. Well, we don't do that anymore. We're in the car, which is even better. Because when those doors are closed and you're traveling at 60 kilometers an hour, they can't jump out when you start talking about Jesus. They are trapped. <laughs> you didn't realize how amazing your car can be, did you? It's a beautiful opportunity to share what God is doing in your life. So use your trips to, to tell your children what God is teaching you, to ask questions and debate issues, and even to pray together. If you're driving, don't close your eyes. Thirdly, talk about Jesus and his word in the bedroom. The scripture says there, when you lie down and when you get up. Family ministry specialist Phil Bell says, and I quote, for the most part, children just seem to be more spiritually sensitive and a lot more open at bedtime. So fostering our children's faith isn't complicated. We need to keep our eye open for teachable moments and bring faith into daily life. Fourthly, faith formation is deliberate. The requirement of the Deuteronomy passage is intentionality. 
Verses 8 and 9 say, Tie them as symbols on your hands, them speaking about the Scriptures, and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Now, devout Jewish people over the years have always taken that literally. They've bound what's called a phylactery around their heads, a little box on a cord which has the Shema, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is one, on a text inside that little box. And then they nail a mezuzah to the doorpost of their home again with the Shema inside there. But I don't think that God necessarily intended these verses to be applied this way. But he does want families to have practices and priorities that deliberately keep Jesus and his word at the forefront of our everyday activities. So another reflection point for you. What are the practices and priorities in your home for impressing the scriptures on your children? The Catholic author Life Kerwald views family life as revolving around ritual, routine, and rhythm. I like that because it reminds me that we need to create a structured environment in the home. That that's essential for a healthy home. If there's disorder in the home, Children are more focused on survival. But with order in the home, children are more likely to reflect on their feelings and their identity, which are critical factors in faith formation. So don't compartmentalize faith formation from daily living. Create intentional moments and opportunities and traditions and experience Experiences that integrate Jesus and his word into your family's everyday lives. So that's a little bit of what we see in the text. Before we conclude, here are three practical implications which are embedded in the context. Number one... God wants parents to take the primary role in fostering their children's faith formation. The primary role. I was very interested in another piece of research that came out a few years ago that discovered that the average Christian child in North America attends a church like yours, 1.7 times a month, which added up amounts to about 24 hours in a year. In other words, your average church in North America gets one day in the year to spiritually impact the children. Wow. Wow. Compare that to the average parent, regardless of whether they are people of faith or not, who engages with their child or children 3,000 hours in a year or more. It's a hundred and something days. I haven't done the math on that. Obviously... Parents are the key to the faith formation of their children, not the church. The church, which is my second point, has a supportive role in fostering children's faith formation, which means churches need to be thinking about how they equip the parents 
That's the primary role of the church. Yes, it's great to do what you're doing, and I love your Sunday school department. I love walking in and looking in the, that first door on that side, and it's got that wonderful word, family. I said, yes, confirmation for today's message. <laughs> but as a church, work to equip and encourage the parents so that they can do everything they need to do. Thirdly, God wants us to foster faith formation so that we, our children and grandchildren, will respect and love the Lord as long as we live. That's what the whole passage is about. That's why I am using up air this morning to point us to the fact that God wants us to pass him along. Are you hearing God's word? See, it's not enough to hear. We must listen. And to listen is to act on what we've heard. So what do you need to act on based on what you've heard today? What has the Holy Spirit impressed on your heart and your mind? Is there one thing you're going to do when you leave here today? What is it? Don't miss the opportunity to pursue what God prioritizes. Don't miss out on the wonderful gift of giving yourself for the good of others. Successive generations need you to tell and teach them about the phenomenal works and wonders of the Lord. This generation of Canadian children, this breaks my heart, this generation of Canadian children is more disconnected from Jesus, His Word, and His people than any generation prior to this generation in the history of Canada. We are living in a time where more than 87% of our children have never stepped foot inside a church and know nothing at all about Jesus. That's Canada. Don't keep the Lord to yourselves. Don't hinder the children by your inactivity from coming to Jesus. Generation Alpha, that's the generation that started being born in 2010, need you to connect them with Jesus and his word. You and I need to tell them about him. I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, a child needs you to help them grow up with Jesus. A child needs you to help them grow up with Jesus. I was at a church beginning of January, near here, Fairhaven's Community Church, first Sunday of January. And I spoke on Christian grandparenting. I had so many people come to me afterwards and say, we have never, ever, and we've been in the church for decades, ever heard a message on Christian grandparenting. But more important than that, this is the first time as grandparents, and many of them said this in different words, that we heard that there is a purpose for our lives still. This is the purpose. A child needs you to help them grow up with Jesus. So don't insulate or isolate yourself from God's purpose for your life. Now remember back, the very first thing I asked you to do was to narrow down to one name of a younger family member. Bring that name back to mind. Each one should reach one. I believe God gave you that name for a reason. As you go on from here, Whatever the Lord has put in your heart regarding the name of that person, 
act on it. Tell the next generation the stories about what God has done in your life. Answer their questions about faith. And live, most importantly, live a life of faith. Model Jesus. Fostering the faith formation of the next generation matters. Big time. In the power of the Holy Spirit, let's bring the little children to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the opportunity this morning to hear from you, to be given your directive for what we are to be about, for what we are to be prioritizing. Now, Lord, fill us with your spirit. Because we are a needy people. We need your strength to do what you have invited us to do this morning. Go ahead of us and go with us. Help us to reach this generation with the good news about Jesus. Help us to nurture their faith so, we, so that we might see a Jesus generation raised up, living and loving you. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. And I ask especially for OCC in the downtown community of Aurelia here. Into the north and the south and the west and the little bit that goes to the east. To use each one of us who are here this morning to reach a child in your name. Help us, Lord, for your honor and glory. Amen. Just before I uh, sit down, just a few resources I'd like to tell you about. Our staff team at Scripture Union, who are mainly millennials, for at least the last four, maybe five years, have been saying, Lawson, we want you to do a podcast. I'm going, a what? I don't even listen to those. No, you should be doing a podcast. Why? You should be doing a podcast. But it's so much extra work. No, they said, we just want you to talk about stuff like you talk to us about stuff. I said, really? I said, but then there's going to be all sorts of ums and ahs and no, no, that's what podcasts are. I said, what they, ums and ahs and yes, it's got to be very natural, they said. So we've had this ongoing discussion now for a couple of years. Eventually, Jonathan, who serves with Scripture Union, my youngest son, he said, dad, he said, next week we're starting the recording of the first podcast. I said, what? He said, yes, he says, he said, our team have bought the recording equipment. We've bought software for editing it and everything. I said, you're going to edit me? He says, uh, he says yes, we're doing it next week. And he said, it's, he said, it's going to be called the Dad and Lad Podcast. I said, I don't like that name. <laughs> no, he says, we've talk, spoken about it. He says, it's a done deal. He says, we think it's a great name. <laughs> oh. I said, Really? So, uh, a few months ago, we started recording these. He meets with me every Thursday. And I don't get any preparation. He says this, he tells me a week beforehand we're going to be doing Christian parenting or whatever it is, right? And so now we're doing this podcast on Christian parenting, on children's ministry, on family ministry, and uh, grandparenting and... See, I started where I thought I was safe. I said, let's make the first one about Christian grandparenting. He said, okay, we'll do that. And it launched two weeks ago. It's a wonderful resource, especially if you are an auditory learner. It's wonderful because Johnny says some good things, and I try and work along with him. So look up the Dad and Lad podcast. Uh, another resource for you is Children's Ministry Basics. 
uh, its articles on Christian parenting and children's ministry and family ministry and so on. Uh, thousands of people around the world access that full, jam-packed with uh, helpful articles to help you live into uh, what God wants of you. And then uh, we have the Scripture Union bookstore called Christian uh, Books Canada. You can look that up online and you can buy directly online from our bookstore. Or where there's no tax and no shipping fees, you can just walk down the hallway to the table that I've set up on the left down there. And if you come all the way down there, I'll give you a free book as well. Uh, oh yes, where's the free book? So I'll give you this as a free book to say thank you so much for walking all the way from here to the table. And, but what's on the table you'll have to buy. What I especially want you to get during uh, COVID-19, we worked with a number of Christian families. We said, how can we help you as families get your whole family into God's word? We started off, it was a bit like a board game. It's experiential, it's interactive, it uses all the different learning styles, it's designed for all age groups. It ended up, the final iteration was this little pack of cards. This is dynamite. Since we got this published and uh, families have been using it, they've just been walking out. It's our number one seller at the moment. We want to help equip you to do the things we were talking about this morning. Uh, this is just 12 bucks. We'll take credit card or cash. Uh, please come and get a pack of, of that. So that's it from me. God bless you. And thank you so much for the chance to visit. Thank you. So just in closing, I uh, would invite you to stand with me and uh, let's sing the song together. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Of all the praise we could ever bring, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name, Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, oh Lord, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me worthy of every song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Lord, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is 
none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. in you alone and I will not be shaken I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me If you're visiting with us this morning, there's a, a welcome card. If you could fill that out and take it to the Welcome Center, there's a gift there for you as well. And make sure you go see uh, Lawson at the uh, Scripture Union table. And now, God, may you, the God of all hope, fill us with all your joy and all your peace as we, we trust in you so that our lives will overflow with hope by the power of your spirit to this generation, to the next generation, to the next generation for the glory of your name. Amen and amen.